Well, welcome back to, uh, to the second video of our YouTube uh, transitional videos for the SIE. Looks like my uh, camera is kind of wobbling a little bit there and uh, wandering on me, so uh, we'll go ahead and get the whole uh, whole board back in. And one of the reasons is that I want to remind you that we're at Series7Specialist.com. We currently have the full videos of the Series 6 in the old format which will include most of the materials in the uh, the SIE and then uh, then all the material that's in the top off uh, as well as the series 65 and 66 and those are all for free so if you want to pause and bookmark that uh, that website it's going to be a great resource for you uh, really like I say we're all about free we only sell two things one is that we've found that in my opinion anyway the Kaplan material is the best that's out there and we do have a portal to the Kaplan website no additional markup it does help our efforts and we appreciate it and if you're going to be taking the series 7 top off especially and you have any uh, uh, problems with options which is what we're talking about right now by the way uh, then, then this option talk book is really a great resource for you. Uh, for the Series 6, if you're really, really, really struggling, it gives you a chance to just go through these essentials that we'll talk about and, uh, and just take it really slowly, step by step. Okay, We illustrate everything in the book. But where we are right now, we just talked about uh, the fact that there are two types of options. There are calls and there are puts. And then there are two parties to every option transaction, a buyer and a seller. The buyer buys the right to take a future action on an underlying stock, the seller assumes the responsibility to make this decision happen for this guy. So this guy's obligation is over here. This guy's obligation is over here. All right. And a put option then is the mirror image where this person can choose to sell stock, should they so desire, at a specified price, specified in the contract, this party then that has the obligation, that obligation is to accept delivery of the stock at the price specified in the contract. Okay, so let's go ahead and look uh, a little bit close, more closely, at how contracts can be terminated. Contracts can be terminated in three different ways. Okay, the first way is that any of these guys can unwind that transaction in the open marketplace. So let's just say that we had a cost of an option, which is called the premium. Okay, and again, option talk dissects the premium slices and dices 20 ways to Sunday. You don't need it for the SIE. You need to be familiar with the term, the price I pay or the price I get. And by the way, it's going to be the same thing, less commissions, but you ignore commissions on the tests, okay? But, uh, but the price I pay or get, depending on if I'm a buyer or a seller, is going to be called the premium. Okay, so let's just say that our premium was five dollars. And scenario A, the premium went up. It went up from five dollars to seven fifty per share on a hundred shares. Okay, well this guy spent five hundred bucks. All of a sudden, it's worth seven hundred fifty. He might say, you know what, fifty percent. These things are pretty darn short term. Fifty percent. That's pretty good. I'm going to get, while I get this good, I'm going to take my 50% return on my invested money and I'm going to sell it in the open marketplace. Originally, he was a buyer. He's going to sell it in the open market. Conversely, this guy, he received $5 a share when he sold the call. But now he checks, goes, oh crap, this thing's worth $7.50. You know what? I just can't take any more risk than that. I better cut my losses while the cutting's good. So he might go out in the marketplace, he originally sold. How does he unwind that? By taking the opposite action. He buys at $750. Now I only got five when he sold it. Had to buy back in at $750. He lost $250, $2.50 a share. But that's the first way that you can, can actually terminate an option position is by unwinding it in the open marketplace. The buyer can sell, the seller can buy. And that's true no matter what I buy. Because if I buy an option, if I buy a stock, if I buy a car, if I buy a boat, if I whatever, and I go back out in the marketplace, I'm going to sell it. Okay? 
if I originate my transaction by selling something, yeah, you can do that. Okay, it's like borrowing somebody's car and going out and selling it. <laughs> and then what do you got to do in order to get back to zero? You got to buy a car back so you can deliver it to your buddy, right? Now, so, so whatever it is you've sold, you can unwind that by buying it back in. So that's the first way is we can go in the open marketplace and buyers can sell, sellers can buy. And that, uh, that takes the, the, uh, the position back to zero. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we can exercise that, creating a transaction in the underlying stock. And yes, there are some of these like index options, interest rate options. We'll talk about those in a minute. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? The first thing is that we can exercise. Now, remember on the last video, said we said that when you buy an option, you buy a right. And that right gives you the ability to take an action should you so desire. Now, our first guy, okay, it went from $5 to $7.50. And he said, you know, the way for me to maximize my gain is actually to sell it. But it could be, and again, I'll just pull a number out of the air. It could be that our exercise price or stock strike price, those two terms are interchangeable, is that the right that we have is to buy the stock at 50 bucks. Pulling it out of the air, okay? This guy has the obligation to deliver stock to us for 50 bucks. Now, when we set up our position, the price of the stock was uh, 47. We said it might happen. It could get there, right? And so sure enough, it starts at 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. Oh, and then there's some good news that if we look at it, it's going to have a positive impact on the stock probably for a decade. Well, I don't want to just sell my option. I want to buy the stock because I want to hold that stock for a decade. All right, so what I'll do is I can exercise my rights or exercise the option, and that right is to buy stock at a fixed price. So I sit, tell this guy, hey, look, I'm ready to move. Deliver that stock to me at, what do we say, 50? At $50 a share. So he delivers the stock, and I give him the 5,000 bucks for 100 shares. Okay, so that's, that's one. The second way is that you can exercise those. Now, by the same token, we think, you know, this thing has made a real big run. It's come up from about $30 to about $50, $51, something like that. Ah, yeah, I'm getting kind of... And then all of a sudden we figure out why they went from $30 to $50, $51. That's because the, uh, the, the senior management had been... You know, but, but what, we, what we do, I'm getting ahead of myself, is that we better protect ourselves. We're going to establish a right to sell the stock at $50 a share sometime between now and whenever that expiration date is. All specified in the contract, remember. Okay. And so we, we buy that put option. So sure enough, two or three days later, what happens? Uh, the FBI goes in, the SEC goes in, they investigate, they find that the CEO and, and uh, several of the, uh, the, the C-level officers have been lying about sales and lying about profit and lying about expenses, and this thing is just a piece of trash. What happens? Boom! The thing goes down to 12. Ah! But we're sitting right here, and we have a contractual right to sell that stock at $50. So, I mean, I don't want the darn thing. It's going to take it at least seven years to recover. All right, okay, we got to get rid of the whole management team, and you get the idea. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exercise my right to sell the stock, and I'm going to deliver it to this guy, and he is obliged then to pay me $50 a share for it. Why? It's in the contract. Okay. So that's an exercise. Now, time out a half second. What if we had kind of the mirror image, okay? And what if the stock started to go down a little bit? And this guy said, you know what? I'd love to deliver that stock at whatever price is in the contract. Hey, 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 buddy, can I deliver that stock to you? Won't you buy it from me? He says, no. But, 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 hey, look, I'm not interested. No buts about it. I just don't want it. Or maybe, 
accepting delivery of the stock. It's going up just to beat the band. Looks great. It's going to be going like for a decade that it's going to have good price moves. Can we call up this guy and say, hey, look, man, I'm ready to buy that stock. I got money right now. I got, the pen is in my hand. Checkbook's on the table. I'm ready to, to pay you the money that's specified in that contract. And this guy says, nah, nah. I just bought it from, for some insurance. Looks like I'm not going to need my insurance. So, but I'll buy it from you. <laughs> Find somebody else, buddy. Not my problem. See, because these guys, the buyers, when they buy a right, they buy the ability to exercise that right and exercise the option at their discretion. These guys are reactive. They can only make it happen for the buyer. These guys don't call the shots at all. Rather, they respond to the action that these guys proactively take. All right. So anyway, that's the second thing we can do to get rid of them. Sell it or buy it to close out uh, in an open market transaction. We can exercise or be exercised against. Now, a couple of terms that you'll need to know is that, uh, that, that the, when, when we exercise, then by definition, the price of the stock is in the money. In the money. So let's look at that term. Okay, and so here is the price that we specify. Let's just say it's 50 bucks per share. Okay. If I have a call option, okay, so I'm going to put it on this side because that guy just reacts. Okay, we don't really care about this guy at this point. Okay, if it's in the money for one, it's going to be in the money for the other. Out the money, it's going to be out of the money. Now here is why would I want to spend fifty dollars if the price of the stock is at forty-eight? I wouldn't. That's going to be out of the money, okay, for a call option, and it's going to remain out of the money until we reach the fifty. At fifty, uh, let's see, in, out, and at. So at 50, it's at the money. But if it goes up here, anywhere up here, that's in the money for a call option. Now, see, if this X was, was 58, I'll make up a number here, okay? 58 is as good as any because it's higher than 50. Yeah. I'd have to pay 58 bucks if I went out to the open marketplace and bought it, but I've got a contract. And what does my contract say? My contract says I can buy this thing at $50. I don't know about you, I love a bargain. Okay, so I'm going to exercise my right, my stop, my option, if I choose not to, uh, you know, not to, to sell it in the open market. And guess what? If I exercise, this guy's going to be exercised against. So I say, if it's in the money at expiration, I'm going to exercise if I'm this guy. If it's in the money at expiration, I'm going to be exercised against if I'm that guy. So like I say, in the money doesn't have to do with your position here. It has to do with the stock's position relative to the, um, uh, the strike price or exercise price specified in the contract. Let's change it over to green now. Okay, And for this guy... Let's say, let's use the same numbers. Let's say it's 58. And this guy has the right to sell stock. Why on earth would you want to sell stock at $50 if you can go in the open marketplace and sell it at 58? You wouldn't. You wouldn't throw away those $8. So up above the, uh, the strike price, then, uh, then, then this is out the money for a put option. Again, just like we saw before, no matter which side you're on, the buyer or the seller, if it's in for one, it's in for the other. At, at, out, out, whatever. It's the same thing for both parties to the option because it's the option itself that's in, at, or out the money. Uh, let's see. Let's do like so. So I can draw a little green line there. That's at the money because they, they coincide. But now let's take it down to 42. Think like this guy. He has the right to sell stock. 
and that right is actually in the contract and the price is in the contract. So the thing is that he's going to want to sell it at 50 rather than sell it at 42. So as we come here, that's in the money. And at expiration, if an option is in the money, then the buyer will exercise, the seller will be exercised against. So in, at, and out the money. Now this brings up a real, real easy little expression. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me use a different color here. Okay, call up, put down. If you don't remember this, I'm going to call you up. Now I'm going to put you down. Okay, not really, but uh, but look. When you go up above the strike price, calls go in the money. That's where all the action is. Okay? Those are going to get exercised at expiration point. Okay? At the expiration date. As you put down, as you go down below the strike price, and this is in the contract, remember. Okay? Then puts go in the money at expiration. They will be exercised or exercised against. Because where you have the one, you have the other, okay? So that's in, at, and out the money um, uh, that, uh, that you have. Now, what if we're out the money? So instead of call up, our price is down below the strike price and we have a call. Or put down, our price is up above the strike price and we have a put. We're just going to let it expire. And expire worthless is the term that's used and they are worthless because you don't even have a piece of paper to mount on the wall okay you can take a tax loss but you know that's that's about it so you got a line item on the spreadsheet that's about all that's left okay so that's the third resolution to these things is that at expiration if they're out the money we're just going to let them expire because we're better off to take those open market actions rather than act on a, uh, at, at this guy. Remember, the, the seller just reacts. So the buyer is better off, the buyer just lets it expire. And then the seller has no further obligations at that time. So you can trade them and close them in the open market. Okay? You can exercise them if they're in the money, uh, and then you can allow it to expire. Now, one thing that, I don't know why they have this on the SIE, but it's a specific call out point on FINRA's um, uh, outline, is that with stock options, and one little exception I'm not going to go into here, okay? We go into it in the book, but uh, you won't need it for the SIE. With stock options, you have what's called American-style exercise. Now, we Americans, we like to do what we want when we want, and that's the way that American-style options are, is that you can actually exercise those anytime you want. Of course, it's going to have to be in the money, okay? But if it's in the money, and it's Tuesday, you can exercise it if you want to. May or may not be a smart thing to do. You've got your reasons. That's fine. This guy still has to react. Okay? You also have European style. And any time that there's a cash settlement for instead of delivering stock, cash is delivered, then you have a European style, which European only can be exercised at the point of expiration. Okay, so uh, again, American, anytime, both of those start with A. European, expiration, both of those start with E. It's a handy little reminder as to which one is which. Okay?